Hello everybody and welcome to another Top 5 Records video. Today I'm going to be talking about the best 5 albums from 1958. And that's an interesting year because jazz and rock and roll were all doing interesting things. And I'm going to start off by one of my favorite rock and roll artists who I've not given enough recognition on this channel yet. I'm going to start off with Buddy, Buddy Holly and the Crickets. Um, crickets are not on this cover, but it's Buddy Holly. Um, that'll be the day. I mean, this man has made so many awesome, awesome sounding songs. And somehow, that's the strange thing about Buddy Holly, I think his songs don't age very much. You know, um, there, there are songs like, well, That'll Be The Day, which I think has this life lasting quality to it. And this album, it is just one of his great masterpieces. I mean, the guy died incredibly young, incredibly young. And in this very short amount of time, while wearing glasses, and being somebody who made a statement for the coolness of glasses. I mean, right now, he, he might be an hipster icon. <laughs> um, he made awesome, awesome songs. And this record, it's awesome. It sounds amazing. And he he had a certain gentleness to rock and roll. I mean, he was not a tough rock and roll kind of guy like, like Little Richard. I love Little Richard. He was not tough like, like Elvis Presley. He was cool, smooth rock and roll, and something's going on on this record, and I really, really love it. On number five, that'll be the day. Buddy Holly. No crickets. Um, number four. Lady in Satin by Billie Holiday. Now, there are people who say you should listen to the young Billie Holiday, because the old Billie Holiday, you hear her voice has aged, and you hear the damage all the drugs have, have done to her body. And to be quite frank, although I think her voice is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful when she's young, she even sounds better on this. Why? That's got to do with the fact that I prefer voices to have an edge to them. And the edge of Billie Holiday is just amazing. The entire album is great, but I'm gonna narrow my comments down to one song in particular, and that's the opening song, I'm a Fool I Want You, which is a jazz classic, it's a standard. But Billie Holiday, she makes it so incredibly fragile. She is in such mesmerizing control over her voice. One of the great jazz singers. But she makes it much more fragile, breakable. And the orchestration is amazing. This is just one of the great vocal jazz records. And Billie Holiday is, well, she's a legend. Beautiful, beautiful album. On number four. On number three. Also jazz, but jazz of a different kind. Really of a different kind. Different kind. One of the great masterpieces by John Coltrane. Blue Train. And some people even consider this to be the best uh, Blue Note album. Um, actually, it's almost a tie between this one and another title, which I'm going to talk about in a couple of minutes. So Some people might know what, what, what's going to come. But this one, Blue Train by John Coltrane. It's incredible. The first time I heard it, I just wasn't into it, but this was not uh, a record to start off a jazz uh, love and career on, uh, a love for jazz with. It. It's it's a bit too um, far out, really. Right now, after listening to some other uh, jazz albums, I'm I'm just I'm just in love with it. I'm just there is a, a quality to the sound. There's a quality to the playing. I mean, just take a look at the band. I mean, we've got Lee Morgan. We've got Kenny Drew, we've got Paul Chambers. I mean, especially I'm, I'm, I'm also a very big Lee Morgan fan, so it's... This album just takes you to brilliant, brilliant places. And um, I have a, a, a recent uh, Blue Note reissue of this, which sounds okay. But for about 10 or 15 years, I found a 1978 Dutch pressing, which sounds so much better. Nevertheless, nevertheless, and this is interesting news. Um, Blue Note has announced, but not in a big way, they haven't put it on their Instagram yet. They have announced it in a video, I believe, uh, uh, 45 RPM uh, audio file guy video, that they're gonna give this the tone board treatment, but they're gonna go the extra mile on the tone board treatment. So 
Tone Poet is already an audiophile series by Blue Note, they're gonna go the extra mile. So we might get a Gavin Gray master of this this year. I mean, hold your best people. This album, oh, I can't, I can't wait, can't wait. Now talking about great sounding records, the next one might be a bit of an obscure album. Um, and it's one of my all-time favorite jazz albums. One of the great jazz albums. Le Grand Jazz by Michel Legrand. And why is this so good? Now, this album has the most amazing lineup of musicians. Just to, get, uh, to take a couple of names from here. Um, Herbie Mann, Miles Davis, John Coltrane, Bill Evans, Paul Chambers, Kenny Dennis, Ben Webster, uh, Hank Jones, the, uh, Art Farmer, Donald Byrd. I, I mean, I mean, tell me another record which has this lineup. Now, having such a lineup, it might be quite a challenge to, to, um, to make something out of it, but Michel Legrand goes all the way and he makes one of the biggest epic jazz albums which is amazing sounding i mean miles davis it was not easy to get miles davis on your record and there's a story that uh, uh michel legrand asked him to come over to talk about it, and he was standing in the door opening and everybody looked at him like oh no michel legrand of him and miles davis is not gonna give michel legrand the chance to do this work and the man listened to legrand's ideas he nodded said I'm on your record, kid. And he walked away. I mean, it's so amazing. I found this a copy. This is the first US mono copy from 1958 uh, in a record store in Rotterdam. The only time I ever found it. Got back home, put it on a mono needle, and it was just gorgeous. I immediately fell in love with it. I could not imagine this sounding any better than this beautiful, beautiful first US mono copy. And then I found this man. This is the Impex 45 RPM double LP version, and it is by far one of the most brilliant sounding albums in my collection. A friend of mine who was not into music, is not into music at all, uh, came into my house when this was on, and he said, this is clearly stereo. I have not any idea how you can say that mono sounds better. And indeed, this this one, this stereo pressing, it does sound better than a mono pressing. And it, it's just sound taking over your room. It is amazing. The entire record is amazing. It sounds amazing. Do yourselves a favor and try this one out because this is one of the biggest, rarest hidden gems in the history of jazz music. Really do yourself a favor. And number one, the best album from 1958, Something Else by Ken Ball Adderley. Now, now this, this is an album, immediately after I discovered it, this would spin back to back uh, several times a day on, on, on my record player. Again, an album with uh, a contribution by Miles Davis, who is not the lead, uh, the leading man. It's, it's interesting, the two, two in one year. Um, Miles Davis uh, plays here. I mean, Hank Jones plays here. Sam Jones plays here, and Art Blakey on Blake E on, on drums. I mean, it's it's amazing. When you listen to Autumn Leaves, the opening track, it comes clear. It becomes clear that we're talking about a record which has a meaning and an epicness of itself. It's a reference of itself. Now, look, I, you know, I shouldn't talk too long about this. Um, Blue Knot has recently reissued it in their classic series, Masses by Kevin Gray. You can pay, you can, you can find for about 20, 25 bucks. It sounds so, so superior to other uh, reissues. I've compared it to, you get an audio file quality for 20, 25 bucks. I'm gonna stop talking about it. Please just go out and buy this album because it is amazing. These are my five favorite albums from 1958. What are yours? I'd like to know. Please leave a comment below and see you in another video. Bye.